Testing continues at the Starship launch site. Starlink ruins any chance for a Castaway sequel. More Falcon launches are coming our way. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. On Tuesday, we went over SpaceX's recent move of Starship 24 to join its booster already on site for an upcoming static fire campaign. And thereafter, the rocket provider shared some professional captures of the action using one of their drones. The following day, Lab Padre's neural cam spotted 24 being lifted onto Pad B, where it will execute said burns. Then on Thursday, Stage 0 venting continued and was seen by Lab's Rover 2 cam. Vintage from the booster's thrusters also happened this week. Meanwhile, the East Coast Orbital Launch Tower continues to sprout out of the ground. It's currently three tiers tall meow, and soon will cast a shadow upon the crew tower there at 39A. More levels of the tower sit up the way at Roberts Road, as well as parts for its own rocket catching chopsticks. Brings back memories, doesn't it? Elon randomly twatting humanity will reach Mars in your lifetime. Unless, of course, the Reaper calls your number like tomorrow or something. Without a common goal, humanity will fight itself. The moon brought us together in 69. Mars can do that in the future. Except the moon was done militarily out of necessity to take the high ground from the communists during the Cold War. So it was a pretty solid need for the United States to get it done quickly. And still, much like space travel today, the hippies in the far left didn't get behind the effort. But obviously, I'm rooting for him and his company. My audience is well aware that public support is critical for success with Mars. We should all come together to support the mission, and that includes defending it from a new and much more loud and aggressive critic, those infected with the woke mind virus. And while Elon is trying his best to father planet Earth, Daddy again reminds us that the population of Mars is still zilch. On Thursday morning, SpaceX placed another 53 Starlink satellites in the low Earth orbit for their internet constellation, flying the Falcon 9 booster for its record-tying 13th mission, and landing it without an audience on the Just Read the Instructions drone ship bobbing on the Atlantic. The company shortly after tweeting a comparison of the feed between two of their drone ships during booster landings. Video on the right using Starlink service, and the one on the left using the other guy's satellite internet. But even still, I feel they're being too generous to their competition here. This is a more accurate portrayal. SpaceX then followed up with the announcement that Starlink Maritime is now a subscription option for customers. From merchant vessels to oil rigs to premium yachts to the Black Pearl to Tom Hanks accidentally vacationing on his inflatable raft. <laughs> Starlink Maritime allows you to connect from the most remote waters across the world just like you would in the office or at home. Users have the ability to pause and unpause the service at any time, which is good since it will set you back five grand a month after your $10,000 upfront hardware fee. But hey, if you're stranded on your own tropical island, you don't need to save your money anyway. Take your little bitch! To be honest, and at risk of sounding like an unpaid Starlink salesman, it kind of sounds like you'd be getting what you pay for. For SpaceX's live streams, Starlink Maritime added a 5,900% download throughput, 700% added upload throughput, 95% reduction in latency, and 75% reduction in cost. Elon writing these terminals are an upgrade over the usual terminals that came before. They're high performance, built to withstand salt water spray and extreme winds and storms, which was not easy to do. Oh, and by the way, the next Starlink launch is currently on the books for Sunday evening. We'll be covering it live on Rumble, so be sure to become a subscriber over there for free using the link in the description below. Support alternative platforms that support free speech. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. Last week, Rocket Lab was our honorable mention for launching NASA's capstone spacecraft to the moon. Well, since then, and about a dozen hours after it jettisoned from the Lunar Photon Transfer Vehicle, the CubeSat stopped communicating. This led to a delay with Capstone's first trajectory correction maneuver originally scheduled for July 5th, but on July 6th, communications were re-established, and on July 7th, the burn was completed. At this time, there has still been no word on what exactly caused the outage. The next burn will take place on Saturday this weekend, which is just the second of a series of burns she'll have to do between now and reaching the moon in November. Well, that's all for today. Happy to have shared this brief moment in time with you. Do come back and see me again. Okay. Shout out to my supporters who generously backed the making of these videos so everyone can stay up to date and entertain if all goes according to plan. Do have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed. <laughs>